in the realm of music, being different is not a bad thing. Honestly, it's the best thing. Because that's where you build your core fan base, your cult-like fan base, your super fans, your hyper-fanatical people, your family, whatever you want to call them, right? Your core constituency within music. The people who will share your music with everyone, but also the people who will connect the most with your music. Because you showcasing how you're different and how you're unique and putting it out there and saying, hey, this is me and I'm okay with it. That helps a lot of people who feel like outcasts feel like, hey, look, that person's just like me. I can relate to them on so many different levels. And it's cool, it's okay. When I'm around them, when I'm listening to their music, when I'm around other people who like them, at concerts or whatever, I feel at home. And creating communities online is a great way to get people from all over the planet who feel that exact same way to connect together but also to connect to you and your music and what you represent as an artist because see you don't just make music you make art right and the art that comes from the heart that's that part right that is exactly what makes an artist an artist is being unique, being different. And when you do that, when you showcase that to the world unabashedly, meaning unafraid, of what people will say, you will bare minimum create that super cult family, whatever you want to call them, right? That super, super engaged and loyal fan base. And at maximum, you'll create a cultural shift. There's been many different people who have created cultural shifts based off of their uniqueness in their music. Kiss was a very big one. Okay, for those of y'all familiar with Kiss, um, ICP kind of took some of what they did but made it a little bit different. They were very, very unique. Kanye was very, very unique with the way that he made music, especially beats with all the samples and everything like that. They really, really revolutionized music. And there's a lot of people from all genres that have been able to make their stamp on culture. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I've ran into multiple different artists who will say, Oh, you know, I can't find people around my area that are on the same shit I'm on. And I keep telling them, I'm like, look, fuck your local area, go online, right? Because your local area, you only have that population to deal with, right? And trust me, growing up in a 98% white town and being in love with hip-hop I became the outcast quick okay and it's because I grew up in a small country town in Indiana and I was born in 86 so I grew up all in the 90s and it was rare okay I was in a group by myself most of the time even some of my friends that, you know, they were cool with me or whatever, they, they didn't listen to the same music I did. I eventually, once I got to middle school, see, four elementary schools combined into middle school. So then that increased the amount of people that were there, which then gave me a few more oddballs to connect with. And I did. I found people who were just like me, who loved the hip-hop culture and shit like that, and who were different, and I connected with them. And that's one of the things 
that kind of led me to think, oh wait, hold on. It's not, I don't have to fit in. Yeah, I'm not going to be the most popular kid in school because I'm not fitting in, but I'm going to actually have real people around me who connect with me and who, who like me for who I am. Right? Like I said, I still had a few friends that liked me for who I was, but they didn't really connect me on the hip hop thing, right? And then when I went into the military, I was able to actually meet up with a couple of people who made music, okay? And that was one thing that nobody did in my area growing up, right? It was very, very rare to find people making music. I'd have to go to like another town over or something like that. And it was just, uh, yeah, it wasn't conducive. But whenever I went to the military, I found people who made music. And that's where I met two of what I consider my brothers. Even though, you know, over the years we've kind of lost touch and stuff like that. One of them we passed on earlier this year, unfortunately. Fucking random health condition, but... You know, the thing is, is I ended up finding, I'm like, wait, the army is a collection of people from all across America. And I was able to find my select people. Yeah, I had some friends that, you know, weren't a hundred percent about making music or whatever, but you know, like, like one of my good friends, he didn't make music, but you know, he liked listening to hip hop, but he also liked listening to other music. I like listening to other music too. What I'm saying is, is that all that helped me realize, wait, it's about finding those people that are closest to you, not about just being known by a lot of people and being friends with a lot of people or whatever. And then the internet really started getting big with social media, smartphones, stuff like that. And I realized, wait a second. This is how you connect with the most people. So as an artist, I recommend to every single one of y'all that you don't worry about getting that cult fan base around your area. You go online. You showcase your weirdness, your, your exceptionalism. You showcase, hey, look, I'm an oddball, but this is what I'm about. This is me. And you are going to have 10 to 40,000 hardcore active fans who are able to support you financially with your music dreams. Where you can live that musician lifestyle and you can interact with all the fans that are this most similar to you. You know, like I said, look at what ICP did. All right. Over the years, yeah, they've fallen off stuff like that, but. You know, like I said, growing up in the 90s, I saw what they did. And they took all the oddballs. And they said, hey, look, you're odd, you're different, you're welcome here. We welcome everybody who's different, right? And that created a common place and a common interest for people. And they were able to make millions and millions of dollars while creating the music they enjoyed, being themselves, and engaging with fans who love them for their uniqueness and who are just as odd and unique as them. And whether you know, whether or not you like ICP's music or the culture of Juggalos or whatever, it's a good point to make because it shows you as an artist that you don't have to worry about trying to make the popular music of the day. You don't have to worry about, you know, uh, trying to gather the masses and, and blow up and go super viral and shit. You don't have to do that, okay? You will be able to find people just like you. And that's how you are able to grow as an independent artist and still be yourself, not feel like you're selling out, and be able to live the musician lifestyle that you want to live. So be that oddball. I mean, hell, look at me. Harcos, like I just told you. White dude, loves hip-hop, right? 
especially the boom bap inner city style shit, right? But I don't like living in the city. <laughs> I live outside of town. I've tried living in cities and shit like that. It's not for me. I don't deal well with people <laughs> at all. And that's why I come out here every single morning to the woods. For those of y'all who are listening only, I'm out here in the woods. Go check the video. But y'all in the video, you can see I'm out here in the woods on a trail, going down the creek. I also like to go fishing, kayaking, stuff like that out in nature. But I'm not no country boy. <laughs> like, I know how to, to prepare my fish and stuff like that after I catch them. But... I'm not so keen on, you know, slaughtering deer and shit like that. Like, I love eating deer meat. You know, I'll grab it off somebody else. But I'm not, you're not going to see, see me in a fucking deer stand and shit like that early in the morning. Now, if, you know, apocalypse happens or whatever, fuck yeah, I'm going to get some deer. I'm going to figure it out, right? But I'm not country boy. I don't like fucking jacked up diesel trucks and country music and fucking boots and spurs and all that shit. That ain't me. But I like nature. You know what I'm saying? I'm an oddball. And I'm okay with that. I've been an oddball my whole life. That's what you told my you heard my story. Right? I've been an oddball my whole life. And as I've gotten older, I'm almost 40 now, I'm 38. As I've gotten older, I realized, hey, look. Fuck it. Let me be an oddball. You know, who cares? I don't care. I'll be around the people who are the most like me, who I'm actually going to enjoy being around, and we're going to be able to do the things that I enjoy to do, okay? And if that means I only got, you know, two or three friends to hang out with, fuck it. If that means I spend a lot of my time alone, instead of always out with my 30-person friend group or whatever, fuck it. Because I would much rather be an army of one than to be another drone in the masses. That's just how I see things. But anyway, like I was saying, as an artist, you need to put out yourself, who you are, all your uniquity, uniqueness, excuse me, all your uniqueness, all your oddities, all your complexities, everything. Put that out there. And be as artistic as you can be with it, too. And the best way to do that is to create short video content or even long video content like this and chop it up into shorts, right? But create as much entertaining and engaging content that speaks to your fan base, to who you are as a unique individual, and to connect with your fans, connect with those, that group of people that are just like you. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you're going to be able to do it. But you can't grow as an artist saying, oh, well, everybody's into blah, blah, blah trend, and I'm not about that. So, you know, the industry is just not for me. No, you're a quitter. Winners never quit, quitters never win, right? So you're not going to fucking win if you quit. What you need to realize is there is 8 billion people and growing, unless we have a world war, right? That's another story. Anyway, there's 8 billion people on the internet, or sorry, 8 billion people on the planet, right? There's 8 billion people on the planet, and almost 4 billion of them are online. And almost 2 billion of them speak English as at least a second language, if not first, right? So you have at least 1 billion people to go through and to find 10,000. 10,000 out of 1 billion. That's nothing. That's a fraction of a percent of the people on the internet that you need to find who are just like you. And see, the thing is, you know where to find these people. It's all the places that you like to be it's in all the groups that you like to associate with online it's in all the in you know entertainment that you like to indulge in online that's where they're at 
So when you're operating online and going about your day, enjoying things, commenting on on things and engaging in discussion, do it on your artist pages that have your smart URL or website, website's better, in the description and be active posting entertaining and engaging content. And when you do that, you will start finding the people in your group. They will go check out your profile, see what you're all about because they like what you just said in that comment or or in this discussion. And they will go see what's going on. Oh, you create music too? Oh, you're just as unique as I am and you make good music and I can rock with it? Okay. Count me in. I'm a fan. Let's go. Right? That's how you do it. You build that community by standing on your uniqueness and not backing down. So go out there, create entertaining and engaging content, be unique, be creative as fuck, and go out there and put it in front of all the people just as weird and as unique as you are. See ya.